Hello, welcome back to my channel, welcome to today's video. Today I am filming the next episode in my series that I'm running at the moment where I'm creating five different meals for up to four people all for under 25 pounds. I'm buying all the groceries from Aldi, trying to keep them as affordable as possible, but also delicious, because isn't that what food is meant to be? Delicious, we're meant to enjoy our food. I'm having so much fun creating such nutritious and delicious and yummy meals, all for under 25 pounds. So far in this challenge, I've managed to keep well under the 25 pound budget. Um, I do think I'm a bit of a pro at shopping at Aldi. So this week's episode, I have already done the haul and price breakdown with, um, which I've linked here for you. So go ahead and watch that if you need like a shopping list and if you need to know how much everything is. I'm going to get on with the cooking in just today's video. I'm also adding um, some of these recipes onto my Instagram highlights and I'm currently in the process of creating something very, very exciting, which puts all of my recipes into one place. All of my recipes are aimed at families and they're all aimed at eating on a budget, but eating well on a budget. I think it's crazy that some people are having to um, choose between heating and eating their house. Um, so I want to go kind of get ahead of the game and help you get ahead of the game. Um, save money in the kitchen area and create fun, delicious, nutritious recipes, my favorite thing to do. This week's series, this week's episode of the series is slow cookers. You wanna come up? You wanna come up? You wanna come up? Yeah. This week's series is going to be all meals made in the slow cooker. It's currently summer at the moment. We are hot potatoes, aren't we? We really are hot potatoes. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited for autumn because this hot and sticky weather just, it doesn't motivate me. It actually makes me feel really sluggish and really grim. But saying that, it's actually a lot of fun making recipes in the slow cooker in summer because one that you're not opening and closing the oven you're not over the stove top or cooking food in the saucepan you are literally just cooking it in a slow cooker throwing all the ingredients in and hey presto you're done so it's actually less heat in the kitchen which is fantastic also another big valid point is it saves us money on our electricity bill. So I'm going to try and make a lot more recipes in the slow cooker. And um, you do use a lot less electricity when you cook in the slow cooker. So it's going to be kind of like a separate running series where I'm making as many recipes as I can in the slow cooker. It really is going to save us all money in the long run. Um, so this week's episode, we're doing a slow cooker recipes. Tonight, I'm starting off with a gorgeous chicken shawarma dish. So that's all already in the slow cooker, but I'm gonna show you how I've done it. Follow along for the recipes um, and the methods. Oh. Yeah, potato, potato. Oh! If you're not already, go follow me on Instagram because a lot of my recipes and methods go over on Instagram. As I said, I'm currently working on something where I can consolidate all of my recipes together. And let's make some really affordable, nutritious, but delicious meals, shall we? Shall we? You're excited. Um, and let's go, let's go. Give the video a thumbs up because it really does tell me you're enjoying these videos. And let's get cooking. <laughs> Okay, so this is chicken shawarma or curried chicken wrap or naan bread. It's absolutely blooming delicious and very, very easy. Great for summer, really nice with a glass of wine if you fancy it. The first thing that you're going to do is take, take your chicken thighs. Now, four to five chicken thighs will easily f feed four adults easily because this is going to be shredded chicken. You're going to be adding veggies in there and there's bread and salad. I do actually take a bit of chicken aside and leave it for Oren because I'm going to roast that for him. Um, so you want to add your seasoning. So add that straight onto the chicken. So turmeric, a tablespoon, a tablespoon of cumin powder actually it seems i went with a tablespoon and a half cumin um a tablespoon and a bit of smoked paprika i love adding smoked paprika to recipes it's um yeah it's such a cupboard essential for us in this house also adding some cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is actually quite spicy and i went in a bit with the cayenne pepper so i would add half a teaspoon 
to your dish because it is quite spicy and then I added two teaspoons of coriander powder once all the seasonings are added on top of the chicken you want to make up your rub so olive oil into a glass with some lemon juice and crushed garlic or garlic paste give that a really really good stir and pour it over your chicken and then I pour it all into the slow cooker straight away and I really rub that into the chicken. So it's best to do this as early as possible in the day just because the flavors really soak into the chicken. You can um, marinate it all and leave it in the fridge but I decided to marinate it in the slow cooker. I really kind of beat the chicken around um, because that really helps the spices go into every part of the chicken. Left that for 10 minutes as it was whilst I cut up um, the onions. With this dish, you can just literally roughly chop up the onions and just shove them into the slow cooker. You don't need to do anything special. Really hot that day, by the way, and whilst I was cooking, I made cucumber water. I've started freezing cucumbers um, and using them as ice cubes, and I just wanted to let you know how good that idea is. <laughs> Anyway, this is a few hours later or maybe an hour and a half, two hours later, I believe, on high and already the chicken is falling apart. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's lots of sauce in there. The marinade has worked really, really well. It's absolutely delicious. Next thing I'm going to do is grate a couple of carrots. This is for the salad, which will go on top. And I also threw in one grated carrot into the chicken mixture. It goes very similar to shredded chicken, so you're um, just spreading out your food a little bit more. Chop up the cucumber into little chopped pieces and grate your salad carrots as well. I'm going to serve this with a side of broccoli just because I love to have green leafy style veggies every day and I hadn't had any that day so um broccoli is really not essential and it's kind of weird with this dish but actually I just wanted it anyway wash the rocket and put it all onto a kitchen paper towel I then salted that and added a tiny bit of sesame seed oil very optional and after toasting the naan breads I had in the freezer for a little bit I um, serve up so you want one large spoonful of chicken so it's going to work out about one chicken thigh each and yeah serve it on top with your salad what goes really really well with this is a big dollop of tzatziki dip and also some hummus i had moroccan hummus in the fridge so i used that and actually it worked very very well with this dish um it's just absolutely delicious I can make this um, with vegan meat pieces as well, which are really, really nice. Like a vegan kebab is delicious, but this is like a really healthy, yummy, affordable kebab, which the whole family loves. If you are serving this dish to babies and children, just add a lot less cayenne pepper than I did because it did come out quite spicy, so we didn't feed it to Orin, um, although it was absolutely blooming delicious. Next up I'm making um, some honey garlic pork noodles. This one is so popular and you can easily do this with tofu or chicken chunks or beef chunks. Um, it's really versatile. I often do it with tofu because it's much cheaper but we had a big lump of pork um, which I wanted to use. It's absolutely delicious. So first thing I did was just sear the pork for a little bit and then I chopped it up into chunks and then I add my soy sauce you can do light soy sauce or dark soy sauce it doesn't really matter I add a tablespoon of the garlic paste or you can do two crushed garlic cloves or three or four up to you I like it very garlicky you want to add um, a heaped teaspoon of ground ginger and a tablespoon of honey so you can add an 
oil of your choice just whatever you have it in the cupboard i have sesame seed oil and it goes really really well with this dish so i do add a dollop of sesame seed oil add a big pinch of salt and also a squirt of tomato ketchup in there just to make it a little bit saucy and I've also chopped up a red pepper and I throw it in there just because it's nice and sweet and the pepper needed using. And let that simmer on high um, for as long as you can, making sure it doesn't dry out. Generally, I left it for a good two and a half, three hours like this, and this is how it looked after two and a half, three hours. Already smelling delicious. The only thing I changed or did extra to this was um, I taste tested it, it was cooked, and I added a little bit more honey and a little bit more garlic. You can add spice to this if you're feeding it to babies and children. Orin does eat a little bit of spice, but obviously we don't want to overdo it. Uh, so after about three hours of the meat cooking, it started to go really, really nice and tender. I threw in the dried egg noodles, dried. Now, I usually cook with fresh egg noodles. Could not believe how much water require, was required for the dried egg noodles to rehydrate. So that's just a tip. Throw it in the slow cooker and I would add over half a pint of boiling hot water straight in with them and then close the lid just so you don't have to keep opening the lid. Um, but yeah, they turned out great in the end anyway. And whilst I was adding the noodles, I did add some sugar snap peas in, which went very well with this dish, I really recommend. I cooked a little bit of rice and blended some up for Orin to have with rice, just because it's easier for him to eat rice. And he really enjoyed that. We had our friend over, so she had a bowl. Lawrence and I had lots of spice with ours because we like spice. And we chopped up some spring onion for the top and it was perfect really really delicious very very filling and super duper easy okay tonight's dinner we are having veggie vegan chili con carne and um, you can serve this with rice or tortilla chips or on a jacket potato it's completely up to you it's a super affordable delicious meal that goes a long way um so we're having that tonight i'm gonna not do a voiceover for this recipe and just see if what format you prefer the voiceover or me talking through it um we're just doing little experiments here in this channel so yeah this is a really easy recipe sometimes i do it with beef mince sometimes i do it with vegan mince really just depends what's in the freezer what we have left over and um, today we're doing vegan i will be doing a five for under 25 vegetarian and vegan episodes as well um but yeah i really like this recipe and let's get going okay so these are the ingredients you're going to need so you're going to need some meat-free mince um, from Aldi the plant menu one I think that's one pound 19 this whole recipe is going to feed up to four adults um, red kidney beans I actually picked up the red kidney beans which are mildly spiced and um, just to give it a little bit of flavor we also have um, a pepper that was part of what was in your shopping list that I gave you. We have a celery and we're going to grate some carrot up. Cupboard essentials, so the um, seasoning, so salt, pepper, olive oil. Oh, a white onion, also a white onion, but that's in our shopping budget. Um, so yeah, cupboard essentials, we have um, seasoning, so salt and pepper and olive oil. I'm going to put some ground cumin in, some cayenne pepper. That is completely and utterly optional. Garlic, smoked paprika and a bit of coriander. Um, and that's going to be it. Oh, and a little bit of tomato puree, probably, just to give it a bit more of a tang. Um, anyway, let's get cooking. First thing I'm going to do is prepare all of the veggies and put this in the slow cooker with some olive oil.
Okay, easy peasy, I've chopped up all the veggies. So one pepper, one large carrot, one celery, one white onion. So that's all going to go straight in there. This is warming up at the moment. Um, with this, then I'm going to chuck in this, all of the seasonings, and really, genuinely, that's all all you need to do for, for a few hours. I'm going to leave it on high and it will be ready in probably like two and a half, three hours, it'll be absolutely fine. Um, but I'll leave it on high for two hours and then I'll turn it down to low. But a really cheap, easy meal. So let's get it all in there and um, come back to it later. I've put everything in there, I've put all the seasoning, all the veg. I just put the onion and the meat in there first. So I could add all the seasonings to those first. I put a good healthy dollop of olive oil. The thing that gives you flavor with meat is the fat. Um, fat is the only thing that can actually retain flavor like spices and herbs. And that's a true fact. The fat is the thing that absorbs the flavor. Um, so what you want to do is add like a natural fat source into this if it's a vegan dish. So olive oil is always my go-to. So I've added a nice healthy dose of olive oil. Then I added all my seasonings with the meat-free mince and the onion. Gave that a really good stir. And then I added all of my veggies, my cut up veggies, gave that a really good stir. Now I'm going to leave that as it is for one hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, hopefully it won't dry out. I don't think it will because there's like lots of onion and carrot in there And then I will quickly pour in my kidney beans and a little bit of hot water um, And leave on for another hour and a half. So Yeah, it's great if you want to conserve energy as well I know we're all trying to cut our electricity costs down now. You can put a tea towel over your slow cooker and that will help stop any steam coming out and yeah, it will just really help um, keep it warm. It's been in there for about an hour, it's looking good. So I'm just about to pour the kidney beans. We put all the kidney bean sauce in as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole we, thing. We get the one which comes with chilli sauce. Yeah, because sometimes if it comes with water, you're meant to rinse them properly. Mm. Um, but this one, I think they're already washed and they come with the chilli sauce. So um, it's quite good for Maldi that they do that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna shove those in now and then leave it for another hour and a half. We've decided we were gonna serve it with tortilla chips. I did include, include rice in the budget. We've got wraps sitting in the fridge that need eating, so we're just gonna do it with wraps. What's in the budget? But we've got wraps that need eating, waste not, want not, and they're gonna be delicious. So chili has been cooking now for three hours exactly on high. Everything's gone in there. The only thing you didn't see is I added some hot water halfway through when I added the kidney beans and that was to make sure there's enough liquid in there. Um, it looks great. As I said, we've decided to have it in wraps as like um, burritos. So yes, we have cooked some rice on the side as well because it's nice to add some rice into your burritos. This is honestly going to make enough for at least four adults. There's so much food. Um, so it would be great because we can shove some in the freezer or in the fridge for lunch tomorrow. I've just grated some cheese. We've got some sour cream and guacamole. Um, and all that's left now is to start dishing up. So I'm going to start dishing up. I have taste tested it and it's got a nice little spice, which is nice.
coconut split pea curry this one is so super easy i really really recommend it and um it's probably one of my go-to cheap meals for the week um it's super duper cheap so if you're making this for four to six people you want to wash two large cups of red split lentils and then you want to finely slice with this mandarin um i will link this below it's so great finely slice some white onion um i use two medium to large white onions for this dish it makes six to eight portions and i freeze some as well so pour the onion in with the olive oil and your red split peas and then you can start adding all of your spices a big tablespoon of turmeric you want to also add a tablespoon of ground coriander a teaspoon of garam masala a heaped teaspoon of garlic paste or one to two garlic cloves crushed or a teaspoon of garlic powder and then you want to add a veggie stock or a chicken stock whatever you have um around a pint of hot water throw that in over everything all the lentils the onion and the spices and you, that's it you can just leave it now for a good few hours if you're leaving it on low you can leave it up to six hours before you need to open it again um i left it for the first hour i got changed and then i added in some coconut milk just so i knew all of the spices were soaking into the lentils properly before adding the coconut milk um so i added the coconut milk gave it a really really good stir and put the lid on and I left it for a good two, three hours then on high. And it was absolutely perfect. A little bit of issue with um, my memory card this week. So some of my footage is missing, which is very frustrating. But the only thing I did do 20 minutes before serving this dish, I added a really large handful of washed spinach. I didn't chop the spinach or anything. I just washed it thoroughly and added it in. That wilted away over the 10 to 20 minutes into the slow cooker, gave it a good stir and then served it up and it was absolutely delicious and it's such an easy one if you do want to thicken it out or make it a bit more filling you can serve this with either rice or you can chop up potatoes and add potatoes into this at the beginning of the dish when you add your lentils um lentils and sweet potato or lentils and white potato go really well together and yeah it's just it's really good Okay, as you can see, this is a different slow cooker. So this was actually the first meal I cooked that week. Um, it's all in a funny order. But after 20 plus years of using this, it randomly cracked during this cooking process, which is so annoying. Um, so I did have to buy a new slow cooker last week. But let's hope the new one will last 20 years as well, at least. Anyway, so this week's dish, or tonight's dish, is going to be... Um, cider pulled pork burgers with a coleslaw this is absolutely delicious such a lovely summery um late summer type style dish easy to throw into the slow cooker and everyone enjoys it so you want to get some pork shoulder joint and throw that into your slow cooker you want to season it with lots of paprika some cumin powder notice how a lot of the dishes this week have a similar spices that's on purpose just so if you do have to buy this stuff you're using it and it's not going to waste so add your salt pepper cumin powder smoked paprika you also want to add some demerara sugar if you don't have anything else sweeter but you can add tomato ketchup instead um some black pepper i actually added quite a lot of black pepper to this then you want to get your cider and pour a the whole cider into the slow cooker dish yeah, leave it for quite a few hours you don't need to cut the pork up or anything because after a few hours and high the pork will be very nice and tender then later in the day before serving i start preparing the coleslaw so two carrots you want to peel them and then chop up your celery sticks make sure you're washing all of this before chopping and grating etc the mandarin again is really really great for making coleslaws just because it finely dices things or chops things um at a really good depth um so it's really nice to eat it's got a lovely crunch so carrots your celery and then you want to slice up your apple so i slice up the apple using the mandarin and then i chop it a little bit 
The apples you want to use is something like Bramley apple or Tarts green apples. It goes really well with the coleslaw and with this dish. So put all of that in a bowl and then what I do is add a healthy glug of apple cider vinegar. That is actually optional, you don't need it. The apple itself is going to give you a really nice tang. And then you want to add a big lump of mayonnaise or vegan mayonnaise. This works really well with vegan mayonnaise or Greek yogurt. Stir that up properly and what's really good if you do have it is to add some whole grain mustard um, or Dijon mustard. That is really delicious. Anyway, this is um, a few hours later when I realised that the slow cooker had cracked halfway through cooking, making all of that cider dribble out, which is very annoying. Anyway, I managed to rescue it, sort of, and I threw it in a Le Creusier type pot on the stove. I just had to run out and get more cider. And we carried on cooking it. Honestly, this makes so much, I can't even tell you. And add a big healthy dose of the homemade coleslaw. And that's it, serve. It's a really delicious summery dish, late summer dish, or even early autumn dish. We really like it in this house. Um, it works perfectly with chicken as well. If you don't eat pork, I often just make this with chicken, but this week we made it with pork, um, Lawrence's request. So that's fine, we normally make it with chicken. I really hope you enjoyed this week's meals. I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more slow cooker meals because it's so much more affordable and you can make some really delicious, nutritious meals in the slow cooker. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again really, really soon for a new video. Uh, stay safe, stay happy. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.